Okay, well, thanks for uh, joining me again. So uh, what I'd like to maybe cover tonight is a little bit uh, uh, more to do with actually uh, taking some of our petri dishes that we worked with in the past and then now getting those into grain. Um, it's going to be that time. I'm starting to run out of some pulmonarius grain spawn, so I want to get some more prepared, um, you know, for the weeks to come. So this way, I, you know, I have healthy supply. So what I'm going to kind of go through and show you is um, uh, some of the petri dishes that I've been working with. Um, I had started these a few weeks ago, and I think I actually showed you kind of the, the blank petries um, from about two weeks ago, and um, had just barely gotten them started. So I just got to the point where about 14 days out, um, it's the 23rd today, um, I had done these on the 9th, and um, so you can start to see that I uh, have some pretty good oh, growth in there. Um, so it's looking pretty happy and healthy. And so now I'm gonna work on making uh, basically a, um, a slurry out of this and then I'm just going to inoculate uh, direct to some some jars that I have uh, um, sterilized so I'll kind of show you my work area right now some of the stuff that I'm working with that may or may not help you um, so in front of my flow hood here um, just got some some essentials um, a couple things that kind of hacked together or, or worked out um, just a baby food jar for a simple uh, little alcohol burner I use that to sterilize. <clears throat> when I had done these petries before, um, using inoculation loops, these are very handy. Um, just go ahead and uh, when you're working with those glass slides, you can go ahead and just use a few drops of water and then use these inoculation loops after they've been sterilized with the alcohol burner and then you can swab these um, petri dishes. Um, and you know what you see here in the background, I have uh, four jars that I've done. This is all I can fit in a pressure cooker at once. Um, however, you know, each one of these jars I can do probably close to 40 to 50 pounds of, of dry straw, which ends up being much more obviously once it's wet. So um, I kind of mentioned before that you can really make a lot of grain spawn in a very short period of time with just some basic equipment. Um, having a flow hood is, a, a, you know, I'd say almost essential. Um, you still get contamination here and there, you know, when you're still only filtering out, again, 99.7% of uh, you know the contaminants but uh, overall your, your success rates are going to be very high um, <clears throat> so what i've done i've gone ahead and sterilized uh four jars um, should definitely give me a, a few weeks worth of uh, grain spawn to work with um, i have some uh, walmart uh, isopropyl alcohol 91 percent i use this for sterilizing my hands and then also just sterilizing some of my workspace and i'm using it in my alcohol burner as well um, keep a lighter obviously for burning or uh, igniting that. Um, cotton balls, these are great just to soak with alcohol, wipe things down, um, do what you need to do. Um, another thing I found really handy that I always love keeping around for labeling is um, just the uh, uh, cloth tape, uh, which I think is for, you can get that like in the bandage section. Uh, you know, I guess if you hurt yourself or need to tape gauze bandages on, those types of things. Um, this stuff works great and then I just try to use it to make sure that I'm keeping track of dates and what kind of strains I'm working with. So um, I just label my stuff PP, um, depending on, so this is Pleurotus pulmonaria, so the uh, uh, Phoenix Oyster, and then I put a date on there and you can put more information depending on what it is. I use date codes for some things. <coughs> but essentially what I have here right now, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of work through this and uh, Probably going to use one of these petri dishes right now to inoculate all this. So I'm going to create a syringe. I just go ahead and uh, uh, throw this in a pressure cooker. I also have some water that I threw in there as well. So this way I have some sterilized water and then I have my um, sterilized uh, syringes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of get my hands kind of prepped here. I'll like get myself rubbed down with alcohol. And I'm going to also turn on my flow hood here. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud and be able to talk over that. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. So there definitely is a working area in here. So you can essentially think of this as a box and how it projects outwards all that air is flowing straight out of that. So putting a burner in front of it isn't gonna do me very much good. So um, I'm gonna move that up above my flow hook here. I also like using these. You think you can get these from uh, Fungi Protect Eye. I think he's one of the few people out there that sells these. Um, it's just kind of a nice uh, 
spaded uh, tool, I guess. I forget what these are called, but I like having it on hand, and then I'll use this. I'll sterilize it and then uh, add some water and then mix up uh, my Petri uh, dishes, get that mycelium kind of into a slurry, add enough water that I can put that into a syringe, and then I'm going to go ahead and use that syringe to inoculate my jars. Sterilize this guy now. Get it red hot. This is where a blender could come in really handy. Um, you can actually just take this entire petri dish and blend it up and use that slurry to go ahead and inoculate because now again you have all this mycelium already fully created. Um, it's going to go work very fast um, once you get in here. Um, it really shouldn't take very long. You're probably looking at maybe um, a couple weeks. Another example I have here. I have some uh, Porota Jamor, which are red oysters. And so these are some three pound bags that I was working with. Um, I had just inoculated these on the 16th, so we're talking um, oh, roughly about seven days ago. And you can see this is just about fully myceliated. I can take this and, uh, you know, in fact, uh, tomorrow we'll be doing some straw. I'm gonna make another video. We just installed an on-demand hot water heater so we could pump out 150 to 160 degree water on demand uh, for pasteurizing. So I'm gonna show that tomorrow, but um, you know, Mycelium, you know, you know, green to green transfers, and even using these slurries, seven days out, and you're working with um, some pretty healthy mycelium and a uh, pretty healthy green stone. So it still pays to work quick. Um, you know, to still try and lower your contamination rates. Um, you know, it probably even makes a little bit more sense to use different petries for multiple jars. But again, I have so many petri dishes; these are so easy to work up that. Um, you can easily produce enough grain spawn for a few hours of work a week and you know do thousands of pounds of mushrooms for a few hours worth of work doing grain spawn. Um, so it's, it's very doable. Um, right now I have eight of these petries and one of these is more than enough to do you know a half dozen or even a dozen of these jars. Um, so in some ways I'm probably overdoing it a little bit but again you have that liberty when you are able to produce this stuff quick enough. And I think, you know, having a little bit of a process, getting familiar with it is definitely going to speed that up. So maybe in the beginning it might not be quite as quick for you, but um, you'll kind of figure out what works for you and what your space requirements are and things like that. So. Alright, so we'll go ahead and try and work quick here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour a little water in there, because this is the water I'm going to use in the syringe. Now, just scrape it off the top. Really worked up as I can. You don't have to be too careful with taking up some of the agar. It's only going to add more nutrients to your substrate anyway. So, um, the only thing that does become kind of a challenge is when you're working with the uh, syringe that it doesn't want to soak up some of these bigger chunks. So, you just want to try and scrape it. Get it worked up so it's small enough to fit through the syringe or go from there. So I'm gonna try to scrape up all the white stuff, get it all worked in there. And you can also do just the direct, you can just cut these out and then just put them in. I like doing this now, it just seems to go so much faster and it really just uh, it's way more effective because now you're getting these uh this mycelium all over the substrate instead of just working with a little cube of mycelium and then waiting for that to propagate. So this still just goes so much faster. Probably a little close to the end of my uh, rope here, but...
brown spotting. I'm pretty sure these are all sterilized well, but just to make sure you're not something too weird about that uh, syringe, I'm just going to go ahead and grab another one. Looks much cleaner. get a little challenging you kind of hit a point where it's not really worth taking in anymore but I have a pretty good healthy uh, supply of mycelium in there I mean it's pretty thick so I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy aside there's a little water in my workspace I don't plan on opening that one up anymore I'm gonna go ahead and label that one here in a second but now I'm just gonna take my syringe and uh, probably don't even need to be a purist about this. Uh, this process is pretty forgiving. I'm just going to take what's left here and just go for it. Scrape a little bit extra in. I didn't talk too much about actually cooking the grain. I pretty much just uh, put it in the kettle. I don't like just mixing or throwing the water and grain in here. Um, it usually tends to be where half the grain at the bottom is really cooked and exploded and then the other up top half it doesn't get uh, quite as evenly done. So I like just cooking all the grain at once. Um, then I can kind of control that. And again, it doesn't take that long to do. So I just am able to have a little bit greater control. Um, I'm gonna pretty much just take this Get mixed up just enough and then uh, that's pretty much good to go. I'll label this now. Do that for each of these. Kind of doing like a circular motion will uh, kind of keep pushing the outside grain so it'll actually sort of uh, loop the, uh, the grain in there around so this way the top stuff goes towards the bottom and the bottom stuff's coming upwards. So. pitch I still have seven more good uh, good petries to work with and uh, so I'll have my grain spawn so I'll give this probably uh, probably close to the same about two weeks and then we should have something similar to that other grain spawn um, and we may even see something quicker than that so Usually in between that 7 to 14 days, each, uh, each strain is just a little bit different. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I hope you guys uh, got something out of that. Thanks.